it's always hard to, you know, have the end of season conversation in the in the locker room. Um, but it, you know, it was one of those things that we felt like um, we made them work for this win. Um, well, Connecticut's defense is, you know, obviously it's legit, and it was it was problematic for us. So give them credit, but we made them have to play uh, that defense hard. Um, we needed some shots to fall when we had some open ones, and, and they didn't. You know, a lot, lot of fell, lot fell for them. You know, including an over the head, you know, and one uh, for Alyssa Thomas. So sometimes it's another team's night for those kind of things. But I thought overall, um, you know, I was super proud um, of the team and, and, and the effort, and certainly wanted them to feel victory and, and closing out a series, but not to be, um, but it doesn't take anything away from what this team has gone through and the number of players that we have, you know, that a couple of injuries, um, people playing out of position, you know, that sort of thing. And they just, they just kept battling. And, and uh, I just told them how much I appreciate them. Who would like to start off with questions in the room? I mean, career, a career night for Fee. I mean, she's getting double teams, sometimes triple teams. Yeah. She's scoring on all levels. Um, she needed somebody to kind of join her in the fray tonight in yeah. terms of scoring, right? Yeah. I mean, that was, you know, every night we play, or every 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 game we play. That that was my worry all season long. Was, you know, like we know that Fee Fee put the team on her back repeatedly. Um, oftentimes, K Mac and, and and you know it's it's well documented statistically when K Mac and her have games like they did in Game Two. You know we're hard to beat. Um, you know adjustment that Connecticut made and putting Allen on on K Mac made a difference. Um, but I think overall, whether it was that matchup or just the ball pressure, the and and you know, we heard it post game. You know wasn't a surprise to us, but it's handling it is a, is a different story. Um, but we just, you know, Fee was able to put it down and, and, and get in there and play, hit a couple threes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Fee, Fee just didn't get the help. You know, they got their, you know, their two stars like they did last game. Uh, we didn't quite get that. We got that in two players and in, in Carlton and McBride combined. Um, we needed a, a third score, and they got their third score, and that was my biggest worry is was trying to limit the fact that they could get a third score. Um, and so Ty Harris was the one that, that really um, chewed us up and spit us out in the different ways that, um, you know, she played in the pick and roll, you know, got spaced, you know, Alyssa finding her, you know, for three balls. And um, so we shouldn't have enough offensively. Um, Paint-wise in the first half, you know, if I could have that back, we would probably do something different. Um, you know, we cleaned it up, thought we were better in the second half. Um, but again, offensively was the reason why we we, we, we didn't we couldn't go toe to toe the whole way. Her, her final numbers were pretty spectacular, but it seemed like it took Fee a little while to get going. There was her back limiting her in the early minutes. I don't I don't think so. I think I think it was just a matter of I mean you could ask Fee, I don't I don't I don't think so. Um, I think it was a matter of kind of finding like when, when they when they punched early, uh, which again, not a surprise. And and we just had a hard time, I think, offensively identifying what was open once we settled in a little bit and we started to, you know, try to get a little more targeted. That's when that's when she got going uh, a little bit more. And um, let's give Fee so much credit. You know, it doesn't matter what they throw at her, what what match they throw at her, double teams, you know, et cetera. She just she's special and um, obviously a really important piece for us as we move forward. Um, sticking with Fee, uh, you played her at the five for decent stretches in the first half and the second half. It felt like that was when she was at her best, not only yeah. offensively, but defensively as well. Yep. Um, what went into that decision? What do you think enabled her to play so well on both ends? Well, um, I just felt like we needed to try to get her more space. And so the, you know, going to Carlton and to, to play the four just to get a little more space. Um, I, th I thought Dorka was struggling, and, and so it was probably more about that. Um, you know, a little stretch there with Milich, where we just don't get what we need defense and rebounding wise. Um, you know, while while there can be a little bit of offense that comes from that, we just and we just tried to spread the floor a little bit, and 
you know, I felt that Fee in a game two as well, her best spots were when she was when she was defending the five and playing the five. And um like we said we just couldn't couldn't get enough shots to go down. The credit to it wasn't a case that we were open and we just didn't make them. You know, we had some that were easy, we just missed, but so did they. But uh, credit to, to Connecticut's defense and, and making everything difficult for us. And then BC played a season high 29 minutes tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, what went into playing her extended run? What do you like? Do you yeah, she, I mean, there? I just think she's had a good series and she had some momentum towards the end of the season. You know, we were playing her a little more consistently. Um, thought she was really helpful. You know, she was the one in game one. I know, you know, there wasn't a game that we were successful in, but I thought Carlton's minutes were, were good. And so I just felt like she was in a good place. And, um, you know, spreading the floor, being a little more aggressive. And uh, well, that was essentially it. And I didn't have a lot of other choices on the bench. That was, we were pretty thin. <laughs> hey, sir, a little bit of a three-part question. How much fun did you have coaching this team this season? How tough is it that it's over now? Yeah. What are you looking forward to moving forward out of this group? I appreciate that question because um, I really want to make sure it was said because I, I, I know I certainly said it last year when I didn't have as much fun. Um, this, team, this team was super fun to coach. And they were fun to coach because as a coach, you like to teach. And, and that was the frame, frame of mind that we went into the season with. It was a growth season. And we wanted to just, as coaches, don't focus on outcomes. Focus on teaching and giving and, and, and building a foundation. Um, and, and at every turn, and I just told them this, that every turn, whenever we coach them and ask them to do something, they tried their very best. And as a coach, as a teacher, you know, that's what's the most rewarding part of what we do. And... I also told them that the hallmark of Lynx basketball has been how we do it. Not just that we're successful, but how we do it. How we treat each other, how we connect with our fan base, um, you know, the people that they are. And, and when we play, I think people walk out of the gym knowing it and they see it and, and they can see what our shortcomings are. I mean, they're realistic. Um, but, but those are the things I'm proud of. And we defied expectations. And, and you do that. We did the same thing in the bubble in 2020. And when you have the right people, the right mix, and they believe in each other and they'll do anything for each other, and they compete with and for each other and have that mindset, they don't care who gets the credit, and they gave of themselves. I just talked about Kayla McBride's. Um, I've never seen her give of herself the way that, that she did and the joy that she had in doing it. So there's so many success stories that we had that really give me joy and go, and I walk out of here with my head high, uh, I am super proud of this team and what we did this season. After that question, I almost hate to ask this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just your style, Pat. Go ahead. <laughs> you've had a lot of nights this year where you've had to play without a true point guard. When you're without a what? True point guard, yeah. When you're uh, trying to get into your offense against a team that's as, as tenacious <laughs> defensively as this one, yeah. does it really kind of manifest itself maybe more than anything? No question like about it. No question about it. Um... And I, you know, I communicate, communicated with Mitchell that really appreciated what she, what she tried. You know, she tried. We didn't bring her here to be the point guard, and she spent probably 90% of the season playing there, you know, and had ups and downs in doing it. But that's one of the players that I literally, whatever we asked her to do, she tried. She tried her very best. Um, but there's no question. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough for everyone else. You know, it's hard to organize. It's hard to, like you say, get into our stuff. Um, you know, Bantam, um, you know, as, as a bench player, you know, like I thought she, she helped, had a, had a solid season. You know, she got that, that stretch where she was injured, took a little time for her to get back. Um, but I thought she was, obviously, she was big in that game two win. Uh, but pressure, 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 obviously, it's, it's difficult to, to manage when it's, not, when it's not your gig. And so we missed Lindsey Allen, who I thought was having a fine season. Uh, and we have some work to do with our roster. I mean, that's, that's something that we knew. Um, and and we have a lot that we that we learned from, and you know I don't have any magic solutions at that position, but um, you know would have Lindsey Allen would have would have would have helped us for sure. I'm not saying it would have meant that we would have won the series, but it just gives everyone else calm when when you have someone that's naturally in that position and knows what to do. You're speaking of developing the roster. 
Um, can you just tell us about how you feel that Dorca and Diamond progress throughout the season and if this series is something that is going to really be beneficial for their growth in the future? Yeah, and I, and I really tried um, – with Dorka and Diamond, you know, throughout the season, probably more Diamond. We committed to Diamond being a starter early on. Didn't I didn't care if she was bad. She was starting. Um, you know, number two pick, we need to figure it out and, and help her, you know, grow and, and, and put her in hard situations, hard matchups, hard games, et cetera. And, and hopefully she will tell you, and, and you'll get a chance to talk to her tomorrow, that um, being in those situations, how much she learned and grew. Uh, now, Dorka kind of came on as a result of an injury. We didn't necessarily have an early commitment to minutes, et cetera. Uh, but we had a mindset that, you know, the, the young players were going to get an opportunity to see what we had. And Dorka obviously knocked it out of the park when, when she got a chance. And things that we could do with her um, – you know, when you're not successful, like in a game like this, you're certainly going to go back, and I'm going to second guess a lot of decisions. You know, um, Dorka was size was was what gave AT problems. Um, we kind of got caught up in our offense, and and so that came with some some cost. But but Dorka, I say that to say that think about all the matchups that Dorka experienced in her rookie season, and each one, you know, she she studied them. And went out there, and anything we asked her to do, and I'm telling you, like in game, I've changed my mind like three, four times what I want her to do. She's like, "Well, now you want me to do this, right? Now I need you to do this, right?" And then, and then when they start fixing that, then I need you to do this, you know. And and she just anything we gave her, she just really, really tried. And and so, in terms of accomplishing what we set out to do, those two rookies gave us the chance to do that, and we found success. And then so now they experienced playoff basketball. And there's not anything more that you could ask for in terms of what they got. They know what they have to get better at. And, and I'm really looking forward to the future uh, with those two no longer rookies, uh, you know, being part of what we're doing. Coach on Diamond, obviously the series was very physical. Yeah. Tonight could play with a lot, a lot of physicality. It felt like for the most part it was sort of playoff fouls only with yeah. the exception yeah. of the way Diamond was officiated, uh, sort of culminating in that uh, foul on the three on Dorn yeah. right from the bench. Is that is there anything in her technique that's maybe be putting, making her susceptible to those kind of calls, or is this uh, her getting kind of the short end of the I stick? think, yeah, I think, you know, whether it's true or not, I mean, that certainly feels like, you know, you know the rookie didn't, rookie was a target. But I also think, you know, you got to learn, you know, in situations – you know, what, what triggers a referee, you know, um, you, you can't put them in situations that, you know, if they think they see something, I think in that scenario where you're, you've got somebody bottled up, you know, probably showing your hands might've been a better, but that's easy for us to say in the heat of the moment. Um, and sometimes there's bad calls and, um, I don't necessarily think she got her unfair share, um, you know, she, she, she learned a lot defensively and, and got better defensively. I don't think that was one of her major major problems. But I think for her learning what you did in college and attacking the basket and how you did it, um, you didn't have the same success in, in the pros. And so it's something she's really good at. So I think that's the thing she worked on the most is to try to figure out how she can be in that space where she's turning the corner, going to the basket, how do you seek contact? I think that's probably the biggest thing um, that, that she can learn so that she can get back to making the free throw line a big part of what she does, which is what she did in her. Her free throw rate in college was off the charts. And I've not seen that very often where, you know, typically if you get fouled in college, you get fouled in the pros. That, that is a translatable statistic. And uh, the, the discrepancy of the college and the, and the pros was – far more than the one I could have imagined. So we just got to help her. We, and, and some of that helping her is going to be getting, getting more space on the floor um, in terms of shooting the ball. And, you know, we had too many players that you could help off of and clog the paint. And, um, but anyway, Diamond, I thought Diamond was uh, a sponge, learned, had some success, you know, had a lot of learning experiences and, you know, a success story for us. person. We'll pivot to the Zoom and start with Jordan. Hello, Coach. First, I just want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you, Jordan. Also, I want to talk about the pizza call. Even though, unfortunately, 
you guys lost. Nafisa was the story of the night for your team. I kind of want to just talk about her role as a leader on the team overall. Like, you guys started off 0-6, and, and there was a lot of doubt. But what was it about her leadership that just led you all to just start taking off from here and ending up to where you guys are at right now? Um, Fee, Fee just has a way about her that she's so consistent and steady and uh, very emotionally mature, um, connects with everyone regardless of personality. Uh, and they all just they all just trust her uh, and believe in her. And, and um, she's, just, she's just in a space where um, she brings her very best every day the way that she is coachable and the way that she receives information from, from her coaches, that's contagious. Um, she goes to each player, you know, she's been here now five years and, and she goes to each player and she'll say, this is what we need from you. Um, she just, she's trustworthy, dependable. You know, you, you, there's just so many, so many great qualities of, of fee and, and when a superstar, you know, sometimes you get superstars that they don't, don't really have time for other people, and Fee is just the opposite of that. Fee put the team on her back and, and gave credit all the time, you know, to teammates and told them how much she appreciated them and loved them and, and, and just how to be there for each other. And, and that's how you get through tough times. Thank you. You're welcome. Nathan? Oh, happy birthday, Coach Reese. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to just talk about you know, your team started off 0 and 6. You know, to get to this point where you're at this season, can you just talk about the resiliency, the adversity of this team? Yeah. Um, and I thought, you know, tonight's game might have been a microcosm of, of the season a little bit that um, really tough stretches in the season that, you know, losing games early on you know, by five points or less, whatever the statistics were at that time. Finding ways, knowing that we were close, uh, sticking together, learning, adjusting, et cetera. Fee putting the team on her back was was a big part of us getting out of that. I um, thought the game tonight, you know, obviously we got punched a little bit, got down early, came back. You know, we just, they don't quit. They don't quit. And, and it's a testament to the quality of the people. And, and I've talked about this, you know, quite a few times now that the group looks, they look inward, they don't blame. And that's sometimes what will happen to a team if you're not successful is they, they blame, they worry about their minutes, you're not running enough plays for me, et cetera. This team just never did that. I mean, not to say that everybody was happy with, you know, minutes, et cetera. It was more of that wasn't the priority. The priority was how do we get better? How do we win the next game? And so I think taking the, you know, that, Short, short-term memory piece, but then also really locking in on the next thing that we have to be good at, and just take steps to get better, and and that's how that's how we na we navigated that. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. And last question coming from Michael. Yeah, um, Coach, I, I had two if I could squeeze them in. First, on just for you, I know you'll um, you have a little time maybe to catch your breath, and then the the national team grind kind of starts and I want you to just talk about how much you are looking forward to that especially in the lead up to Paris and then second um just watching two veterans like Bonner and Thomas um the way that they've performed in their careers I wonder if you could just give some thoughts on the two of them as teammates if I could start with with the that since that's what's on my mind um you know having just played a series with them uh that's the fifth consecutive uh, semifinals for for Connecticut, common denominator in all of them is is Alyssa Thomas, and um, I don't know of a player with greater will uh, to win uh, than Alyssa Thomas, and we certainly knew coming into Game Three that you know we were gonna we were gonna be faced with a you know Alyssa Thomas who was on ten as we say, and. Uh, you know, that's another player that just, you know, puts her team on her back. I'm, I'm super excited that I get a chance to be on her side when we are with USA Basketball. 
Uh, so just an incredible player. And then, you know, she just makes everybody better. And, and I think she's been a big part of, you know, Bonner's incredible season, um, who's had a resurgence. And uh, obviously Bonner was, was terrific tonight. We, we, were, we were trying to do a little better on those two. I'm not sure that, that wasn't thinking that they would be able to duplicate what they did in game two. Um, but, but they did, and then some. Um, but, yeah, just incredible, incredible players with incredible careers, and, and uh, that's, that's obviously a really good basketball team. And uh, congratulations to Connecticut. I probably should open with that. You know, they, they earned it. They, they earned, and, and um, they're going to be an awfully tough out. Um, I can't even think about USA basketball right now. Uh, I do enjoy the opportunity to, you know, to be around – you know, it's just incredible basketball players and, and, and the people. Um, and we'll get to that. And, you know, we have a couple more windows, November and February. Um, you know, just a couple more, a couple more things and as, as we lead into to Paris. But I can't even begin to think about that at, right, right now. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to all of you. Uh, appreciate, appreciate the coverage and, and um, the ways that you guys supported us and blasted us when you needed to, Mike, right? Uh, call it like it is, and not just singling Mike out, but I just appreciate it. Uh, if we didn't play well and, you know, we don't sugarcoat it. Um, and, and then uh, all the great things that hopefully you guys felt from our team. Hope you enjoyed covering us, and, and we appreciate y'all. <clears throat>